What is happening everyone? Welcome back to episode 18 of Manny's Food Channel. It's your boy Manny, aka Mr. Cooking It Up. And for this episode, I got a request coming all the way from Trinidad. And this actually came at a perfect timing because unfortunately here in Calgary, I think we'll be seeing the dreaded winter soon. And what better way to start off the winter than to sit down and have a delicious bowl of ramen. Now there isn't a lot of step to this, but it does require some effort and time, unlike the other uh, videos that I've made before. But the great thing about it is you can make some of the components the day before, and the next day all you have to do is just put it together. So without further ado, let's get down to business. Okay, so to start this off, to start off the stock, I have about 1.5 kgs of bones and meat. Now I'll just pre-wash these. Uh, the kind of bones that I have, luckily I was able to find a beef shank that has a bone marrow in it. And I got a little bit of short ribs in here. So what I'm gonna do is first I'm gonna bring about five liters of water to a boil so I can remove any of the impurities. And then we're gonna add any of our aromatics that we want in here. Now remember, whenever you are making stock, always start off with cold water. Don't start off with hot water because that way you want to bring everything up at an even temperature to a boil or a simmer. So that way you can boil out any of the impurities. And, and the impurities will be at the top here. Uh, so bring it up to a quick boil. Now for this kind of recipe, if you want a more concentrated flavor of stock, use more bones to meat. But I kind of use even 50-50 because my short ribs have some bones in there. And I also have the bone marrow as well. So we'll bring this up to a boil. In the meantime, we're gonna prep all of our aromatics that we're gonna put in here. And then uh, once this comes up to a boil, we'll skim off the impurities. So the thing with this stock is <clears throat> you can make it the night before. So that way on the day of when you wanna make the ramen broth itself, you don't have to waste so much time in making it. So the two things you can do the night before is you can make the stock and you can do the marinated beef, uh, which I'll be showing you in a couple minutes. Now, for the aromatics or any kind of uh, additional uh, flavor that we want to put in the stock you only have to rough chop it you don't have to go off fancy because we're gonna toss all of this here except for the shiitake mushrooms which we can use as a garnish later and also the beef so just quickly prep all the ingredients that you need I'm not even gonna grate the garlic because we're gonna toss it later but we're gonna add all of these different vegetables so we can add a different depth of flavor and the reason why I'm using shiitake mushrooms is because it has it adds a, such a nice umami flavor to it and also has a great depth of flavor as well. And I prefer personally to use dry mushrooms over fresh mushrooms because there's such a more intensified flavor with dried mushrooms over fresh mushrooms. So even if you want to add any other kind of dry mushrooms, you can definitely do that as well. But uh, I'm just gonna use shiitake for this recipe. Now another reason why I want to show you how to make stocks is because stocks are extremely easy to make. And the stocks that you buy in store are never really going to taste the same as the ones that you make in-house. And they're not that hard to make. Once you know the foundation of how to make a stock, you can put your own twist and different kind of variations on how to make a stock. But when you make your own stock, it's going to be a lot more flavorful than the ones you buy in store. So as you can see at the top here, these are the impurities, usually that's the blood or any of the excess stuff that are in the bones that you don't want in your stock because you want a clear flavor as well as a uh, clear looking stock when you're eating it. So I'm just going to skim off the top and I'm going to do this a couple times. It's okay to remove water uh, while you're skimming it because we added excess water so that way we can account for any lost liquid that we remove. So. Now I'm going to bring this back to a boil. It was just boiling 30 seconds ago, so I'm just going to bring it up to a boil. Continue to let it simmer for probably 5-10 minutes until I remove any of the excess impurities. And then I'm going to add in all the mushrooms, onion, garlic, green onions, uh, any other aromatics that I want to add into it. So for now, I've skimmed off as much as I could at the top. 
can still see that there's some impurities coming up, but throughout the cooking process, when I'm making the stock, I'm gonna be skimming it along the way as well. But for now, I'm gonna stop skimming. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in all of the veg that I'm gonna use to flavor the stock. So I'm gonna toss in all the onions, the ginger, the garlic, the green onions, and shiitake mushrooms. And we're gonna let this boil, or sorry, not boil, we're gonna let it simmer for about two hours uncovered uh, because we want the smell and we want a to and the water to evaporate as well so I'm gonna add in everything here give it a good mix and every so often make sure you skim the top and by the time we're done the meat should be nice and tender that we're gonna use inside the ramen and the stock should have a nice intensified flavor but while we're waiting for this to cook, we're gonna be moving on to marinating the meat for the garnish of our ramen. Okay, so while we are waiting for the stock to cook, we're gonna prep the marinated meat that we're gonna use as a garnish on top of the ramen. So first I'm gonna add some water, sugar, soy sauce, um, sesame oil and finally togarashi spice now togarashi spice is a Japanese spice blend you can buy it in at uh, Asia, any Asian supermarket uh, such as TNT and sometimes Superstore sells them but it's very rare that they do so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give this a quick mix it's gonna be a very simple marinade and then now we're gonna prepare the beef that we're gonna toss in here and let marinate, preferably overnight. Just like we, we will uh, do with the stock is we'll cook it and then we'll leave it in the fridge. So that way both the flavor of the marinade as well as the stock intensifies overnight. And on top of that, it removes some of the workload that you'll have for, for this recipe. So now I'm gonna set this aside and we'll prepare the meat. Now the meat that you wanna use is completely up to your preference. What I have here is a beef blank plate. The reason why I got this is because there's a lot of fat around it and nice marbling inside. And what marbling really means is just uh, the intramuscular fat that's inside the meat that provides nice depth of flavor and moisture. Uh, my personal preference is I like to use uh, deboned short ribs. So that's also another option that has really good flavor and nice amount of fat. Now, just to give you guys an idea of how I'm gonna cut this, if we're thinking about the bowl, which is this bowl that I'm going to use for for uh, plating, you don't want it to be too big and you want nice slices around your bowl, depending on how you're serving it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut into nice thick slices. Remember to always cut against the grain, you don't want to cut with it because you want a nice tender meat. If you cut it with the grain, sometimes it doesn't hold the shape very well and it might be too tough. So I'm gonna cut it into nice thickness. Probably I would say around a quarter inch, quarter to half inch. And what I'm gonna do is I'm simply gonna cut it in half. Nice even slices and nice thickness as well. Don't be stingy with the thickness because you wanna have a nice amount of garnish going throughout your ramen. So now I'm just gonna continue to prep this meat and then we'll add it into the marinade. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add all the meat to the marinade. I'm not going to remove any of the excess fat that's at the bottom here, it's not too much. And the reason being is because when I cook it, I'm going to render down the fat anyways. And pretty much what rendering means is I'm going to melt down the fat. So I'm going to be marinating this for about two hours, just for the same time frame as I'm cooking the stock. But preferably, if you marinate it the day before, it tastes a lot better. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to cover this up, leave it in the fridge, and we're going to move on to prepping the ingredients to make the ramen. And then we're going to prepare the garnish and our toppings for the ramen as well. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the prep. 
there isn't much to do. All we have to do is finally dice some shallots, uh, grate some ginger, and grate a couple cloves of garlic as well. Now, I like tofu, so I'm gonna be tossing in some tofu puffs. Uh, these are pretty much just some deep fried tofu that you can buy at any uh, supermarket. And the other thing I'm gonna be tossing in too is some shimiji mushrooms. All I did here is I just trimmed the bottom and cleaned them. So now I'm just gonna quickly prep the shallots and the ginger and garlic as well. And then we can start to strain the stock. And then we can move towards making the ramen broth. Alright, so the stock has been simmering for about uh, three hours now, and as you can see, it probably reduced by at least one third. And the meat is really tender, like fall off the bone tender. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove the meat and the mushrooms, and I'm gonna set it aside. With the meat, I'm gonna remove it from the bone and remove any excess fat that's around it. Then I'm just gonna roughly chop it so that we can toss it into our ramen broth. And then for the stock, I am going to strain it off. And I'll show you how I'm gonna strain it. I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than just using a colander or a strainer. And then we can begin to make the ramen broth. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a strainer on top of uh, another pot, and I'm gonna use a cheesecloth. The reason why I'm doing this is because I wanna remove as much impurities as I can, but if you don't have a cheesecloth, that's totally fine. You can just strain it through a strainer. So be careful during this step. The stock is very hot still, and strain it out. And you can discard all the onions and garlic, green onions, and any other excess stuff that are in there. Just throw them out. And after I strain this, I'm gonna set up all the garnishes for the ramen. So that way everything is ready to plate once we make our ramen broth. And now we have a very clear broth. As you can see, there's no impurities, nothing in there. It's a very nice, flavor infused stock. Now we're gonna move on to preparing the garnishes, uh, including the marinated beef and make the broth. Okay, so before I start prepping uh, what I need to for the garnish, I'm just gonna explain what kind of garnishes I'm going to use. Uh, I'm going to be thinly slicing some green onions. I have a piece of nori, which is dry seaweed, a touch of togarashi, which is that Japanese spice blend, some shiitake mushrooms, which I will be removing the stems, some toasted sesame, a little bit of corn, uh, a hard boiled egg, as well as the beef that we had that we were using for the stock. Now for this beef, all I did was I shredded it, I removed any excess fat and removed the cartilage as well. So all we have here is just pure meat. It's up to you as to how much beef you wanna put inside the, uh, the ramen broth, but I'm gonna be putting probably around 200 grams just to show you guys or give you guys an idea about how I'm going to make the broth. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice up these onions here. And now I'm just going to thinly slice these shiitake mushrooms. And I'm just gonna remove the roots. Okay, so now we're ready to make the ramen broth. First, I'm gonna add a little bit of sesame oil. I put this on just medium heat. I don't want it too, too high because I don't wanna burn anything and we don't wanna burn the sesame oil either. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna toss in the shallots and just sweat them off for a couple minutes. 
Next up, I'm gonna add the garlic and the ginger. Now I'm gonna toss in the miso paste. I'm using red miso paste here. Uh, I chose this over white because I like the flavor. It's more intensified than the white one, I feel. But if you can only get your hands on the white miso paste, you can definitely use the white one as well. And then along with the miso, I am going to throw in just around a tablespoon of toasted sesame. And I'm just gonna quickly saute this for maybe a minute or two before I add in the beef and then the broth. So I only added a little bit of stock first because I wanted to make sure that all the miso is well incorporated with the stock before I add in the rest. Sometimes if you add in all the stock at once, you're gonna get chunks of miso and it's not gonna, it's not gonna be mixed in very well. So once I feel that most of the miso is mixed in, then I can add in the rest of the stock. I have about a liter of stock here. So I'm just gonna toss her in, bring it up to a boil and then lower the heat to a light simmer and then we'll continue to add more seasoning to the stock. So now that the broth has been simmering for probably three to four minutes, I'm gonna add just a little bit of soy sauce. Not so much for flavor, but more so to darken the broth a little bit. And we're also gonna add in a little bit of marin. And basically what marin is, is a Japanese cooking sauce. It's a touch on the sweeter side. So it counterbalances the saltiness of the soy sauce and the, and the miso that we're adding into it. So now I'm just gonna let this simmer for a couple minutes. And the only things I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add in the mushroom in a couple minutes after the simmers, as long as uh, as well as the tofu. But in the meantime, while we're waiting for this to kind of meld all the flavors together, we're gonna cook the beef that we marinated earlier. So that way we can prepare the garnish and start plating. All right, so this meat's been marinating probably for around three hours on my side here. And it smells really good. And I know that I've infused enough flavor within the couple hours that I've had. So it's gonna be a nice flavor contrast to the broth of the ramen. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put probably four slices per serving of ramen. And I'm just gonna put in the oven on medium broil just to cook it enough so that I can give some caramelization on the meat. So probably around five to six minutes each side. And then once this is ready, the broth should almost be ready. And then we can start plating. whether or not this is Manny approved. Cheers. I'm gonna try a bit of the beef too. Absolutely freaking delicious. The miso is very mild in the background and the, the beef is very succulent, very moist, very juicy. And the added umami of the mushrooms just complements the whole dish. It's really, really good. And it's a great way to start off the winter time. And although there's a lot of components to the dish, you can definitely separate it into uh, different components so that way you can make it a couple days in advance so that on the day of, all you have to do is just assemble it. 
but uh, thank you very much for the request. I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, please comment, like, and subscribe to my channel, and I look forward to seeing everyone next time.